So in this one, we would start at these two points. So 6, 4, and 9, 8. It's going to make a line, and then it wants us to write the equation of that line. So we can find the slope of this. So the slope is, I don't know what the slope is now. The slope is 4 thirds. And then we can see where it goes through the y intercept at negative 4. Okay, so if you get a question like that, make sure you're plotting those points, graphing them correctly, zoom in if you need to, and then if it asks you to write the equation, count that slope, find the y-intercept, and then put that into your um, equation. Another one, go back. was in the very last section of graphing, write the equation of the line graph. So here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's in blue, right on top of the y-axis. If, if we have some vertical line, that's going to be, thinking of your koi bucks, vertical goes with x. So that's going to be an x equals, what would x equal here? Zero. So keep that in mind as you go to graph those. Yes. Okay, so for this one, it says graph the line using the given table of values and follow the instructions below. So not all of these points are going to fit on this line, on this graph, but you want to probably stay away from the um, decimals, stick with the whole numbers, and plot the points that you can. So negative ten, negative seven. Negative eight, negative six. Now you don't have to plot all of these points, but you have to plot at least two. Yes. Can you choose like five of them? Um, sure. You could do any of these points. I would say stick with the ones that are whole numbers. The more points you plot, the better you could draw your line, though. But you can choose any random ones. I'm just gonna go through the list really quickly. Negative eight, negative six. and it looks like it has a slope of up one over two so this should be a point 
there should be a point, and so on and so forth. I, mean, I could check those with the table. 10, 3, 8, 2, so on and so forth. So once you have your points, then hit done plotting points. And it kind of gives you a ruler that you can draw across. Start at the very end. Oh, let's erase that. I don't think that works. Oh. My pencil is also creeping out. Okay. I have done this on my computer. Are there arrows? I can't see yeah, them. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> Submit. Yay, okay. So plot as many points as possible because the more po more points you have, the easier it will be to draw your line. It will give you some ruler, something like that. Okay. Um, Robert, you were saying, what were you saying? Sorry. So one of the problems is y equals four, so I have to x plus five. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. That one you had to use Desmos for. Let's see. You might get something like this where it gives you a table, or it may not give you a table, regardless. Um, if you get something that looks like this and you don't get a table, oh wait, oh, it's, sorry, because it was already solved. Um, what you would do is go into Desmos, type in that equation, or you might be able to copy it. I'm going to see if I can copy it. Negative. I think that was the actual y equals negative three x minus one minus five. Okay. Um, it's miss something messed up there. There we go. And you can either look at the graph and find points on it. Or if you want to actually find specific points, change this. So click the gear wheel, change this to a table. It will start to plot some points for you. And if you want to add in some more, you just type in different X values. If you make it a pattern, it'll just start putting those in. You can also go the other way. So, you could use it to practice on Delta Math and things like that, but not on the test. Yes? But the problem with this thing is that it's 24 and a lot of it's small. Right, so you wouldn't have plotted that point. You would have found some points, the ones, I don't know why I just tried that, I know it doesn't work. I would only plot the ones that would fit. So, like negative 410 would work. Uh, 2, negative 8, 1, negative 5. So only the ones that would fit on your graph. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to ask for help really quickly so I can get the board fixed. Um, a 
otherwise I'm gonna have to do this from over here, but it's fine. We will figure something out. All right, warm up. Look at these two and determine how these are alike, how they're different, why are they alike, why are they different, in whatever sense that you find they're alike or different. So take a second, look at that. What reasons do we think these are alike or different? Okay, so when I'm looking at them, this one horizontal, this one vertical, what else? Um, the one on the right is undefined, and the one on the left is... Uh, Zero. So yeah. if you're looking at the slopes, this one is undefined, this one is zero. Okay, what else? Okay, so they both have the same number intercept at three. What else? Okay, both of their lines are straight. Even th even though they're going in different directions, they are both lines and they're both straight lines, yes. Anything else? Are these both the same type of intercept? No. no. What would this one be? I intercept and this one's X intercept, okay. We talked about the number. What about the start of books? Mm -hmm. That is true, yes. We haven't really talked about that, but this one would not be a function because it has repeating x values. Anything else? That's really it. Um, some of the other classes said that they both have a positive intercept because they both have that same number intercept. They're both on a graph, all of those things. While I'm waiting to get help, we're going to try this. So everyone should have notes in front of them that look like, uh, that say domain and range. So we are going to, kind of just type it. Um, what, what is the domain? values and the range y values so when you think of the domain think of your x values or the independent variable the input when you think of the range think of the y values or the dependent variable or the output right um, disregarding the before we're going to do that today but I'm trying to see how to change this color but I can't see it. There we go. We're going to be talking about two different types of graphs. One, if I could get this where I want it, is a discrete graph. Where, that's kind of like the scatter plots we were doing. Um, the points are randomly on a graph, not connected. We don't want to connect them. And then the other one is a continuous. Oh, not typing. Continuous. I think I spelled that right. And just some other vocab to go back to. A continuous function may have points when the function crosses or touches the x or y, the x-axis or y-axis. So we would have a x-intercept or a y-intercept. And then some other vocab, we talked about this when we were doing uh, intercepts. X-intercept has different names, also known as a uh, zero. 
or a solution or a root. So um, I meant to mention this. At the top, your learning target, this is the last thing we have to talk about in that learning target because we talked about slope and intercepts. Um, I don't remember what all the ends were. Intercepts, zeros, we talked about all that stuff. So we just need domain and range left. So if you see, first off, what type of graph is this? Discrete, because it's random points on a graph. You are going to write this in curly brackets. So I'm going to try my best to attempt this with a computer, but it's not going to be great. That was actually pretty good. Um, so we're going to start this with curly brackets. And for the domain, we're going to look left to right. So what is the furthest x value? Negative 4. And then the next one after that? Negative 2. And then keep going. Negative one. One. And what was that last one? Three. Three. There we go. And then you're going to end it with curly brackets again. My end curly brackets never look great, but that's what it's supposed to be. I'm going to type the next one because that took a while. And then when we do this, we want to write all the numbers but without repeating. So we're going to do the same thing for the range. What is the lowest? y value. Negative 4 again. And then negative 2. I'm sorry, not negative 2. Um, positive 2. And there's 1 in between 3 and then 4. So you want to list those numbers least to greatest with no repeats. Questions there before I let you guys try one. Try the next one on the next page. domain and range should look something like that. Questions there? 